Which health system is most efficient? I think we're going to have to move to an insurance-based system of health care. Medicare for all is tonight's loony left. It's insanity. Killer facts are hidden by carefully constructed illusions. In the US, an ambulance can cost around $200 to $2,000. I actually stopped taking ambulances, really. We had one really, really close call where uh, Luca was pretty unstable. We knew things were going south and we drove him to the hospital instead. I sat in the back and slowly increased the oxygen. Um, and my husband was driving 120 miles down 95. How did it come to this? In a country which spends far more on healthcare than any other. Around the world, there are very few developed places, perhaps none, that have no mechanism for some kind of price control. The UK's price controls often mean much lower prices. It's almost as if larger blocks have more negotiating power. 19 million Americans illegally import medicine to save money. The US wants the UK to remove price controls as part of a post-Brexit trade deal. Many more drugs would move out of reach. This chart shows healthcare spending and life expectancy. Around 1980, something went very wrong for the US. Healthcare became a business. With such high costs, is universal healthcare possible? The right-leaning Mercatus Center said it would cost the government an extra $32 trillion over 10 years, but could save $2 trillion overall. You can guess which figure Fox News focused on. This sicko socialism would cost roughly $32.6 trillion over 10 years. Here, an informed physician steps in. A Bernie Sanders type of plan would cost over $32.6 trillion. So that study that you mentioned, it actually estimated that overall health care spending would be lower under single payer. The Mercatus Center downplayed the potential savings. And some fact-checkers claimed it was misleading to point to them. The author of the study says they are not being accurate. Nobel Prize-winning economist Paul Krugman said fact-checkers had believed the Mercatus Center despite its own analysis. Regardless, healthcare that covers more people for more services at around the same price seems like a good deal. For most of the leading causes of death, mortality rates are higher in the U.S. than in comparable countries. At the same time, unnecessary services cost $210 billion per year. In a poll of U.S. physicians, 71% said physicians are more likely to perform unnecessary procedures when they personally profit from them. They estimated that 20% of all medical care was unnecessary, including 25% of tests, 22% of prescriptions, and 11% of procedures. And they said medical overtreatment was harming patients. But Fox News paints an even darker picture of the UK's NHS. It was filthy, doctor. I was there for one month every single day. The, the equipment was falling apart. Uh, the medications were inadequate to the diseases. I, How can you guarantee that our quality of health care won't go down the way it has gone down in Great Britain as a result of their socialized system? In a study of health care performance in 11 countries, the U.S. ranked last and the U.K. first. The UK ranked far higher for care and efficiency. It did less well on results, but it did beat one country, the US. The World Health Organization ranks the US 37th. Misinformation about healthcare is pervasive. In 2009, PolitiFact's lie of the year was that Obamacare included death panels to decide if the elderly were worthy of health care. 30% of Americans believed it to be true. 
By 2016, 29% still believed it. In the UK, anyone can access expensive treatments. The NHS weighs the health benefits, while the US weighs the wallet and lack of health insurance is associated with 45,000 deaths each year. Even 9-11 first responders are not getting the health care they need. Setting aside that no American in this country should face financial ruin because of uh, uh, a health issue, certainly 9-11 first responders shouldn't have to decide whether to live or to have a place to live. The health care industry contributes huge sums to political campaigns, far more than oil and gas companies. And there are over a thousand healthcare lobbyists. Fox News is hiding more than the facts about universal healthcare. When the Trump administration tried to completely overturn Obamacare, Fox News barely covered it. Two polls are worrying Trump and his favorite channel. Healthcare is the most important issue for the election. And a majority of Americans support Medicare for all, including half of Republicans. Fox couldn't hide the reaction at a town hall debate, which it hosted with Bernie Sanders. A show of hands of how many people get their insurance from work, private insurance, right now. How many get it from private insurance? Okay, now of those, how many are willing to transition to what the senator says, a government-run system? Every year, millions of workers wake up in the morning and their employer has changed the insurance that they have. Maybe they like the doctors, people are nodding their heads, okay? So this is not new, every year. Now what we are talking about actually is stability that when you have a Medicare for all, it is there now and will be there in the future. Politically, it may be easier to expand the existing system, but Trump is pushing in the other direction. Save Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cuts. Have to do it. Get rid of the fraud, get rid of the waste and abuse, but save it. People have been paying in for years, and now many of these candidates want to cut it. And voters rewarded him for it in the primary, particularly and in the general election. But today, the White House released its budget for 2018. And among the four trillion dollars in cuts it proposes are billions upon billions of dollars slashed from both Medicaid and Social Security. And Republican proposals would result in millions losing their insurance. One senator's hypocrisy stood out. A few months ago, after my son had open heart surgery, which was something I spoke about on the air, a politician, a senator named Bill Cassidy from Louisiana, was on my show. He got a lot of credit and attention for coming up with something he called, and I didn't name it this, he named it this, he, the Jimmy Kimmel test, which was, in a nutshell, no family should be denied medical care, emergency or otherwise, because they can't afford it. He said he wants coverage for all, no discrimination based on pre-existing conditions, lower premiums for middle-class families, and no lifetime caps. And guess what? The new bill does none of those things. Coverage for all? No. In fact, it'll kick about 30 million Americans off insurance. Basically, any group you've ever given money to thinks this is a bad idea. Do you trust them or do you trust him? Okay? <laughs> A large majority of medical professionals also support universal health care, despite the potential risk to their incomes. Have you ever wondered what's changed in medicine that now you go to the doctor and they don't look you in the eye? Instead, they're looking at a computer screen. The electronic medical record has nothing to do with patient care. It has everything to do with billing and I will not call it an EHR, electronic health record, because there is nothing about health in this thing. Patients, you guys need to understand how this has destroyed medicine. Administration costs four times more than in the UK. Here, almost no one thinks the NHS should be privatized. Trump conveniently changed his tune on the NHS. A friend of mine was in Scotland recently. He got very, very sick. He was really in trouble. And they released him. And he said, where do I pay? They said, there's no charge. And not only that, he said it was like great doctors, great care. Yeah. I mean, we could have a great system in this country. 
Prospective Prime Minister Boris Johnson is also pushing the wrong way on health. He talks about charging for it and plans to cut taxes for high earners. But we love our NHS and we want to pay higher taxes to strengthen it. Brexit, sold as a boost to the NHS, has instead caused a recruitment crisis. It threatens to undermine NHS funding and introduce US health companies. For its greatest trick, Fox News has taken a page from Boris's playbook, flipping reality for the marginalized. We know single payer doesn't work by turning to our sad veterans whose monolithic care was so cruelly rationed and withheld, many wilted and died waiting for treatment. And this was to a group of people who served, many of whom fought for freedom, yet the government punched them in the sack while they waited in vain. Imagine how poorly the truly marginalized will be treated one woman captured the true problem when her leg got stuck between a train and the platform, bleeding heavily from a deep laceration that would require surgery. She begged bystanders not to call an ambulance. Let us know what you think about your healthcare system in the comments. On our Patreon page, you can learn how to improve your brain health and clarity of thought, and cut your risk of dementia in half.